Back in 2016, I had an awesome idea. Let's just train in the gym every single day and go jogging three times a week. It felt great at the time, until I got a sudden high-pitched noise in my right ear that wouldn't go away. Turns out that I pushed my body past his physiological limits. But I was lucky. After a couple of days, this sensation actually went away. This was one of the most obvious sensations of stress that I, that I ever had. But truth of the matter is that central nervous system fatigue, which most people call overtraining, can have multiple symptoms. Today I want to explain you the anatomy of overtraining. On top of that, I want to give you a very simple, free test that you can do today to determine if you're currently overtrained or not. See, overtraining does not equal overtraining. Overtraining syndrome in the exercise physiology literature is actually a chronic sensation of fatigue and stress that usually goes along with a carnivore diet. <laughs> what you likely are experiencing if you're watching this video is a, is a phenomenon called overreaching. And that's what I experienced in my days of savage lifting about three years ago. See, you're watching this video because you're probably asking yourself if you should go train today or not. And the very simple answer to this is probably a yes. But your question or the answer to that is actually deeper reaching. Let me explain you how training works from the perspective of anatomy. This is your adaptation to a training stimulus. This phenomenon is also called supercompensation, which tells us that for an increase in performance, a temporary decrease in performance is necessary. This original and temporary drop in performance can also be called stress or training stress, training stimulus. Now obviously the beauty of weightlifting is that you have to train your next weightlifting or your next training stress, your next training session at that time where your body is most susceptible to change. Meaning when that original stress is already gone and when your body has already improved. But there are multiple factors influencing this. Your recovery time is one factor, for example, and there are multiple factors influencing your recovery time. For example, your sleep duration your dietary intake of antioxidants, which means how much vegetables and fruits you're eating, and also if you're currently eating in a caloric surplus. But also other factors are influencing your recovery time that you might not even notice. For example, your relationship status. Don't believe me? Just train one day after a breakup or after a loved one died. You will likely not hit personal bests. See, our life is quite similar to The Sims, and we can only hit personal bests if all our bars are at their maximum point. That's where we have the most amount of energy. That's why I consider all those factors that we've talked about in, in my clients. I literally want to leave no stones unturned. By the way, if you want to have a consultation, you can click the link down below. But how can you measure that overreaching or even overtraining stress in the first place? A huge factor of this stress of, of overreaching, for example, is not only peripheral fatigue, it is also central fatigue meaning how much your brain is currently fatigued. But what are indicators of brain fatigue? Soreness. Soreness usually means that you experience muscular damage, which is intuitively a peripheral fatigue. But because your biceps, for example, is sore or, or damaged on a cellular level, it also influences your central fatigue. A low pain threshold is also a good indicator. Now, very important, this only goes for experienced lifters. If you're a new lifter, you likely have a very low pain threshold when you're training. Number three is a stress response, just what I described in the beginning, like a high-pitched noise in my ear. But you can have different symptoms, like a, like a loss in sleep quality. So stress responses are very individual. So is pain threshold and feeling of soreness. That's why we need objective measurements. Now online you see some tests on overtraining, on overreaching, on grip strength for example, which is cool. But I think we can do it way simpler. That's why I've decided to create a very simple test where you can test your current central nervous system fatigue. This test is free. You don't have to give your email address and it's that freaking simple. It literally takes you 20 seconds. What you do is simply push this button for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, you measure the total amount of clicks that you got in that duration. The higher the amount of clicks you get, 
the better. I even made a slide chart down here on the website so you can compare your stats. Now, why does this work? See your hand, beautiful hand. It's a very delicate object, strongly intertwined with your central nervous system, okay? Which means, that's why people test grip strength. <clears throat> that's why people test grip strength, because your hands are a good measurement of your central fatigue. Regarding that link, another possible test would be to type, to see how many words you can type in 20 seconds, for example. Now, because there's an extreme deviation in uh, typing strength on how many words you can type based on your technique, this is not a very efficient measurement in testing your central fatigue. Also, the test is based on 20 seconds because you want to minimize your lactate buildup. Essentially, you want to keep the limiting factor to your central nervous system. Now remember, caffeine consumption also heavily influences this. And to fully determine if your central nervous system is actually fatigued, you can only tell by a deviation from the baseline, which means if you hit 50 today, which is not a great score at the test, this doesn't mean very much initially. But let's, let's say, for example, next week you hit 100 or the day, the week after you hit 80, you see a deviation, which means the week after you likely had a very good central nervous system, a very fit central nervous system. And you can only tell in hindsight if your central nervous system was actually at top level or fatigued at that moment at you, that you originally tested. So I would recommend you to test this on a weekly basis and see, see a deviation in the baseline. Keep in mind that your caffeine consumption needs to be the same as told you before, and I also would do this at the, at the same time. Meaning if you tested it previously at 8 p.m., you should test it again at 8 p.m. one week after. I'll leave a link to the absolute free test below. Again, I don't want your email address. All good, all good, my man. Plus, I'll leave a link where you can start my coaching packages. We have a price for only $9. So, my vegan friends, until next time. The mission of this YouTube channel is to put veganism across the goal line. If you want to help us achieve that, like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Let's make food production great again.